district and school community's way of saying thanks, as well as reward members of the school, school community who have provided extraordinary time and or expertise for the benefit of students in the school district. To recognize those that go above and beyond to contribute to the school, students, staff, and community. Recipients can be a community member, a parent, student, or employee of, of the CESU, or other deserving individual. These individuals are recognized for their significant impact on the lives of our learners and educators. For that, we are grateful and thankful. So let's get started with acknowledging and thanking these individuals. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the, the person who nominated uh, the recipient to come up and then they can introduce their recipient and speak to them. And our first uh, recipient tonight was nominated by Barbara Tomasi Gay from Smiley Memorial School. So Barbara, if you come up please. Yes. Okay. So I would like to introduce Leslie Pelch. A parent in our school. Come on up. <laughs> Leslie worked in our uh, Smiley um, Community Association, which is our PTA. So let me just tell you a little bit about Leslie. <laughs> a few years ago, we had an SCA that was led by someone who, who led it for nine years. Suddenly that person went away. And we all wondered what was going to happen with the leadership of the SCA. Well, there was a core group of people that really wanted to be there and to uh, work it out with a lot of different activities. And they were going to have a leadership team. It worked well as each person took charge of major initiatives throughout the year. However, it soon became apparent that there was much more to a fully functioning school community organization than taking charge of the events. Leslie Peltz realized that many of the details of the organization had to be attended to and she stepped up and completed each task with grace and resilience. She provided the glue that held all the pieces together. She was able to see the big picture for the organization as well as the important details. You always made sure that the dates for monthly meetings were clearly communicated through the principal's email and the school's website. Leslie created an attractive news newsletter that was printed once a month, letting families know about the upcoming events. She checked in with our secretary often to make sure that paperwork was properly filled out for each event. She, she reached out to the seniors in our community and they had the Christmas dinner and, and Leslie had students come and sing for the seniors and there were several things throughout and dance with the seniors. That was very fun. Um, Leslie kept track of all the financial transactions for the organization and printed out monthly budget statements, which our financial officer was grateful for. The SCA gives each of our teachers $100 each year for individual school projects and Leslie made sure that each teacher knew they had the opportunity to have this money. In conclusion, you have been an incredibly consistent and effective advocate, strengthening ties between our community and our school. Your support and cheerleading for Smiley has been outstanding and I couldn't be more proud to nominate you. Thank you. Thank you. Lastly, on behalf of Chittenley Supervisor Union and the Triple M Board, I want to congratulate you and present you with this golden afternoon award. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, our next two recipients were nominated by Michael Berry from Richmond Elementary School. So we have Evelyn. Where are you? <laughs> and Denise, come on up. So Evelyn and Denise have been organizing our Four Winds program that runs on our delayed starts mornings. And they organize the trainings, they organize the materials, there's a lot of schedules, we meet monthly, and they have done extraordinary things for all of our students. Um, approximately 100 students come on those mornings and they get to do outdoor education through Four Winds for about two hours, which is pretty spectacular. And we wanted to go out with a bang this year, so they led a field trip down to a, a neighboring property, um, which was a big deal. It was a big deal and it was a huge success. Without their help and our paraeducators, we really couldn't have done this for our students at all. And I am 
eternally grateful mm -hmm. to both of you, and please do it again next year. <laughs> Any supervisor in the Triple Land Board, I want to congratulate you and present you with your golden apple. Gorgeous. Thank you. 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 All right. Our next re recipient was nominated by David Wells and the staff for Underhill ID. David. Good evening, everyone. It's my honor to uh, give this award or, or talk about this nomination to Andrea Sandy. Andrea, come on up. <laughs> when I started at Underhill ID, and um, the final part of the process was to meet with John Alberghini, and he said, David, you have an excellent, excellent school here, and I want you to know that you have an excellent assistant. And Andrea was my assistant when I started there. Um, I soon learned, soon learned that being part of our school and being the assistant at the school wasn't just a job for Andrea, it was a calling. Um, before she became our assistant at the school, she had been on the school PTO and she had been on the school board um, and then that service took her to be working at the school every day. Um, and it would be all of those extra things. I mean, you know, I, I didn't have to worry one second about the, where the files write or the bills write or any of that stuff. Um, but if I just mentioned, there was a walk and ride to school meeting, would you like to go to that? And now Andrea is the representative for Underhill Idea for walk and ride to school. Now at every all school meeting before the walk and ride to school, she's donning a vest and telling the children to come out and walk and ride to school. Even one day when the walk to school day was like two degrees below zero and Andrea's <laughs> trucking it out over to Mills River Park and there are kids coming two degrees below zero she's fired them up and they're walking to school through all of that um, you know she wrote a grant and with the staff that helped get um, skis and snowshoes for the school to expand recreation um, she told me that she took on an extra job to be the um, secretary at the uh, CESU meetings. And all of this, again, it's not just a job, but it's a commitment um, to the education, not only in Underhill and Jericho, but for all of the students in the Triple M district. Um, she really wants to see that this community is a good community for kids and that the schools are well run and serving um, not only for daughters who are very successful, but for all the schools, all the children in the schools. So for that, I thank you and understand it. Thank you so much. Uh, and the Triple M School Board, I want to present you with your golden apple. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, thank you. Our next uh, recipient was nominated by Barbara Nason from Underhill Center School. <coughs> Um, my recipient is not here this evening, but I shared with him prior to this the things that I would be sharing. I was out in the garden a week or so ago rubbing elbows with folks and digging in the dirt, and Michael was there with all of the group um, helping bring the UCS garden back to life this spring. Um, Michael Efron gives willingly of his time to caring for the UCS garden. While there, many families and community members that support the garden regularly, Michael goes above and beyond. Even though his daughter has moved on to middle school, Michael regularly weeds, waters, mows, weed wax, picks bugs, digs plants, <laughs> helps with harvest. Michael is the one person everyone can count on in the summer to check the garden, fill in the summer schedule gaps, or be the go-to guy with questions. The garden committee relies on his knowledge and his willingness to take on any job. Last summer, on a hot morning, I saw Michael out my office window walking up Pleasant Valley Road with his weed whacker ready to tackle the weeds. He uses his own weed whacker and gas multiple times during the year. Michael mows the garden area with a hand push mower, no gas, non-electric, borrowed from another parent. Even when it is not his week to supervise bugs, water, or weed, he is in the garden leaving journal notes for others, picking produce for the food shelf, or making sure it is secure after a storm. Michael has been a constant and reliable volunteer 
who shares the value our garden brings to students and families alike. His support has been vital as the UCS garden champion. He is a behind the scenes kind of guy, as you can see, not here tonight, <laughs> and never wants any recognition. His contribution to keeping the garden growing has been important and significant. Very few volunteers give as much of their time to the garden as Michael Efron, and I am very grateful for his care and help. Before we get to our next uh, recipients, I just wanted to speak a little bit uh, about them, uh, but more so the role they play. Um, as citizen leaders, individual school board members face complex and demanding challenges. They ultimately describe as having the most important volunteer job in the country and facing the <coughs> toughest challenge in an elected American government. Yes, school board members are just ordinary citizens with extraordinary dedication to our public schools. We all know that public education is the back, backbone of American society, and local school boards are deeply rooted in the U.S. tradition. It's the foundation on which our democracy was built, and today local school boards continue to do the most important work of their communities, and that's educating, education of our youth. Their job is to establish a vision for the educational program, design a structure to achieve that vision, ensure schools are accountable to the community, and strongly advocate for continuous improvement in student, student learning. The job of a school board member is tough. The long hours and the thanks few and far between. Too often we're quick to criticize school board members without really understanding the complex nature of their decisions. We often forget the personal sacrifices school board members make. Board members contribute hundreds of hours each year leading their districts. The time spent in board meetings represents just a fraction of the hours school board members spend leading their districts. Collectively, they spend hours on professional development to keep abreast of the latest trends in educational leadership, are deeply involved in community activities, and spend many hours at extracurricular events. They continually advocate for the children of our state, and school, school board members made passionate, passionate pleas to legislators speaking out against budget cuts and pushing for smart reforms. And all of this is done on a volunteer basis, while still managing their families, jobs, and other activities essential to their own lives and well-being. Thus, before we get to our next two recipients, I want to congratulate them both and thank them both on behalf of the school board and the communities we represent for making sure we all work together as a team, ensuring continued excellence in our children's education and to making decisions in the best interest of both our students and our greater community. There is no one who deserves more our deep appreciation for untiring efforts than the following two individuals. Our first recipient tonight was nominated by Michael Marks. And Michael, if you would come forward and speak. And also, I would ask anybody who served on the Mount Mansfield Union School Board, um, when the recipients come up, when the recipient comes up, if you would come up for them as well. I think that would be a great honor, too. So Michael. So I'd like to invite Judy Jones. So, Judy, I think, unless I'm mistaken, you spent 20 years on the Mount Mansfield Board? I did. And seven years as chair? I did. And many of those years on the Chittenden East Supervisory Union Board and various committees? Had to. Maybe just, <laughs> maybe just a show of hands, how many here served with Judy on either the MMU Board or on a CESU committee? <laughs> Quite a few of us. Uh, when I found out you had never been over receive this award, I said, oh my gosh, that's no mission that needs to be corrected. <laughs> in, in my time working with you, I found you to be an inspiration and a role model. You're very kind. Being, well, I think it's deserved. You know, being, being a board chair is a challenging position, and particularly when you have fractious members on a board <laughs> trying to keep us on the straight and narrow 
trying to keep us focused on what really we're supposed to do to benefit education and taxpayers, the way John was saying. And throughout your time on the board, you were just such a role model to us. Thank you. Someone so thought, someone careful deliberation, somebody who always modeled respect for others. And I think it built a culture for us in this community, a culture that I hope is continuing through our current board, uh, a culture that is inquisitive on the things we need to be inquisitive about to serve students, that is serious and deliberative, is respectful of other people, and is respectful of the community. And we owe so much of that to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> when, 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 I, when I was writing the nomination form, I, I, I tried to think of a metaphor to describe you. And the metaphor I came up with was that Judy is a great teacher. I mean, when we think about all the great teachers we've had in our lives, they are people who model something to us. It's by their very behavior that we learn how we're supposed to behave, how we learn what we're supposed to learn. And what Judy always modeled for us in all the boards I served on with her was the kind of commitment and respect and concern that we really need to carry forward as school board members if we're going to fulfill our job. So I'm really honored to, to be here and to help present this award to you. And I know it's heartfelt from everyone in this room. Thank you very much. So Judy, on behalf of the Nomantio Union, and really on behalf of all your friends out here and that, thank you so much for everything you've done. For well, all thank you. And I think, as we said, 20 years, but the time was right. Uh, changes were happening. It seemed like every time it was a three-year uh, commitment was up, there was something that I wanted to see through. <laughs> you know, I'll do it one more time. And then the, uh, the consolidation was affirmed, and then it was the time. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Our final recipient tonight was nominated by Judy Jones <laughs> and Jen Bossajoy. Well, unfortunately, George isn't here, but he too was a Mount Mansfield board member for many years. And uh, as a former Mount Mansfield Union school board member and chairman of the budget committee, for many years, George exemplified what a school board member should be. His concern was for the students in the community, and he evidenced it in his approach to structuring our board to be forward-looking with regard to curriculum, student activities, facilities, and our relation within the community itself, as well as the finances. George was very instrumental in promoting and making changes in our schools around child nutrition and food service. Um, Probably many of you don't know that at one time uh, our food service budget was like $90,000 in debt. And through careful restructuring and thoughtful, um, I don't want to say manipulating, but movement, uh, he, he facilitated reducing that to a point where at the time, at the end of last year, it was basically self-sufficient. So that's, re that's remarkable in this day and age. But he, he created an ad hoc committee and continued to push for more appropriate and balanced meals in our school lunch program. George was instru instrumental in moving the facilities work forward for Mount Mansfield Union High School. When we rebuilt our athletic fields, George continued to support the facilities committee and administrators in their work. He kept children and their needs at the center of the conversation. Without his efforts in these two areas, our schools would be quite different today. Following his retirement from the school board, George has served the schools in his role as a legislator, representing Jericho and Underhill. Going door to door, George listens to the concerns of the families and taxpayers. His work keeping high quality schools and balancing multiple competing needs has brought a voice of logic and reason 
on behalf of the children to the State House. Whether communicating ideas and needs or advocating for specific legislation to better serve children, George has had a significant impact on our schools. Through all of this, George has an attitude of commitment and sensitivity as well as sensibility. This has and will continue to serve our communities well for future generations. And I would think if there was one word, uh, Michael can borrow your, but uh, would be, to describe George would be commitment. He was full in whatever he chose to do or chose to focus on. He started at the beginning and he saw it through to the end and uh, we, we really not only appreciated but benefited immeasurably from, from his commitments. So I'm very happy that he is going to receive a book in that one. Well, I can say on behalf of the, the Nomination of Modified Union School Board that George played a huge role um, in helping us become a, a, a merge board. Um, there were numerous times that we tapped into George uh, up in Montpelier for his advice or for his help or whatever. Um, and uh, he played a huge role in the success of the, of the merger happening. So on behalf of the Triple M and CESU, Congratulations to George and thank you for nominating.